Hi everyone, Rich Savell here. In today's educational video, we are going to be speaking with our registered dietitian, Serena Hunt. And today's video is on how to choose the proper enteral formula for your critically ill patient who requires enteral nutrition. And this comes up quite frequently actually on our rounds and in the ICU. So you've got a nice paradigm and it's the first question you bring up is, is the patient hemodynamically stable? Mm -hmm. And the issue there is, and this comes up as another interface between intensivists, surgeons, and nutrition, is if the patient is too hemodynamically unstable to tolerate enteral nutrition, it, there's concerns for splanchnic hypoperfusion leading to increased incidence of ischemic bowel mm -hmm. in that setting. Mm -hmm. The reason I'm sort of beginning with this, as you did, is it's a little bit controversial in terms of when a patient can start it. And I know, as you've pointed out, the, some of the agreed upon areas are if somebody is on escalating pressors yes. or more than two pressors. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, but again, I, I think one of the important points in critical care medicine to remember now is that because you have sepsis or because you're on pressors at all is not a hard contraindication to receiving uh, enteral nutrition. Mm -hmm. So then the next thing you brought up that I thought was excellent was if the patient can tolerate enteral nutrition, do they have a risk for bowel ischemia or are they receiving continuous renal replacement therapy? And when I first saw that, I was like, why, why, what do those two things have in common? So Absolutely. do you want to talk about that? Definitely. So um, both those things have in common that they require a high protein formula. And at our hospital, the high protein formulas that we have on formulary happen to be semi-elemental formulas. So that's why those things got grouped together. So, and the two specific ones are Vital 1.2 and Vital High Protein. Correct. And we're going to put on the bottom of the screen some of the important details. And I think for a house officer, it's very important that you're focused in on energy and you're focused in on protein. And this is a theme you have helped to make sure we are all talking about. Absolutely, especially in the surgical ICU where our patients really need that protein. And the other point that you and I have learned or you've helped to explain to me is that semi-elemental means that it's usually peptides of three mm -hmm. in general, two or three. Yes, two or three, di or tripeptide. And those are actually more absorbable than if they were just the peptides alone. Correct. And yeah. so that's a really important point. It's not that semi-elemental means that some of it is elemental and some of it isn't. It means that the protein is provided as dipeptides and tripeptides. It also tends to have a lower osmolality, so it also is better absorbed for that reason. So the second, then the question is, if it's not one of those patients, there are two groups of patients where it has been clearly proven, or to the extent that the data supports it, mm -hmm. that an immunomodulatory formula is beneficial. Absolutely. I think I'm saying that correctly. Yes. And I, I know when I've gone over this with you, it's important that it is the non-septic patient in this group, and it's traumatic brain injury mm -hmm. and the trauma patient. Yes. And in our medical center now, if we have a non-septic trauma patient or non-septic patient with traumatic brain injury, what should we be using? So in our center, we have a Parativ 1.3, and we may be getting Pivot 1.5 at some point. And those are immune modulating in that they have arginine and glutamine and DHA and EPA, which are components that help with the inflammation process. Icosa pentaenoic acid and docasa hexaenoic acid. Yes. Fancy. It's wild to figure out how to say that. <laughs> I'm critically ill and I have renal failure mm -hmm. and some concern for either elevated phosphorus, elevated potassium, or intermittently receiving hemodialysis. Yes. And there's specific formulas you recommend there. Yeah. So in our facility, we use Nepro. Um, and you'll notice that someone who's on CVDHD actually has much higher protein needs. So Nepro would not be as appropriate in that population. But for the intermittent HD or renal failure, Nepro is a good choice because it is volume restricted and also restricted in phosphorus and potassium. Then the next thing that comes up, and there's overlap, and that's why we work closely with you. Mm -hmm. But the question is, does your patient have diabetes, which is obviously very common in all patients and specifically critically ill patients. And so what do we do then? 
We have a low-carb formula called Glucerna at our facility, and that basically provides um, a lower amount of carbohydrate and also has a carb-steady formulation, which is supposed to help with blood sugar control. So, in theory, lessening the peaks of high glucose? Exactly. So then the next question comes up, certain patients, for example, patients with acute lung injury or congestive heart failure may require volume restriction, and we have an agent that you recommend there. Yep, so the formula that we tend to use in our volume-restricted patients would be 2-cal-HN, and this actually offers 2 calories per milliliter, so you can offer a very um, a lesser volume and still meet their calorie needs. So, and then the this one also has, as does Nepro, these short-chain fructooligosaccharides, and maybe if you wanted to talk about what those are. Sure. Um, so short-chain fructooligosaccharides are a specific type of soluble fiber, and this fiber um, has evidence to show that it may help with diarrhea and slowing stool output. So in the critically ill intubated patient, we find that diarrhea definitely is an issue we have in the ICU, and providing patients with a formula that has short chain fructo oligosaccharides rather than a mixed fiber formula can be beneficial in helping with that diarrhea. So that actually lets us segue into our next Perfect. group. And this comes up a lot in, in ICU in general. Yes. Patients who are critically ill often have difficulty absorbing water appropriately and can have diarrhea for multiple reasons. And I, we, you and I have coordinated with this on critically ill patients a lot. It can make management of volume status somewhat confusing. Mm -hmm. The concern if they have um, uh, Clostridium difficile or antibiotic-associated colitis can be very, very significant. Mm -hmm. But there are some first steps that can be taken understanding the different enteral uh, formulas to help optimize and, and in some cases just stop the diarrhea altogether. Absolutely. And I, before I hand it over to you, I, I think that the one of the key themes you've helped me with is because your patient is having diarrhea is, again, not a contraindication to enteral nutrition. Absolutely. So why don't I let you take it from there? Yeah, sure. So what we try and do in our facility is we will switch our patient, if they are right now, if they're on a polymeric formula, we will switch them to a semi-elemental formula to facilitate absorption. And the formula that we use most commonly would be Vital 1.2, which also has those short-chain fructooligosaccharides, that specific type of soluble fiber that has evidence to show helps with diarrhea. So that's kind of our first line of defense. And then if that, after a few days, is not really showing improvement, we also will try adding additional soluble fiber using a, fi a fiber modulator. Supplement. Supplement. Um, but again, and, and as you pointed out, it's it's the soluble fiber, and that can often be confusing as a physician to learn the difference between the soluble and insoluble fiber, especially in the surgical patient, mm -hmm. where it may be more uh, reasonable for the soluble fiber, right? Absolutely, yeah. So mixed fiber may be a way of kind of deeming when something has soluble and insoluble fiber, and really that soluble fiber is what's beneficial for diarrhea. So then the second I'm sorry, the next issue that you brought up is, and this is actually a very interesting, important area, which is enteral nutrition or nutrition in general for the intubated obese patient. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess the thing that I would start out with is that the, the theory is that patients can be obese and malnourished. And one of the important recent recommendations that I guess has been around a while, but has really been re-emphasized is this concept of as long as you're giving appropriate amounts of protein, you mm -hmm. can give uh, lower amounts of energy mm -hmm. to help with the critically ill patient. So maybe if you could talk a little bit about that. Absolutely, I think it's really tempting to see an obese patient and think that they maybe don't need nutrition because they're obese, but that's absolutely not true. Um, recommendations are to actually make sure you're giving sufficient protein and, and, and hypo feed, um, hypocaloric feeds to that obese, obese patient. And that's because the obese patient actually tends to utilize muscle mass or protein stores for fueling when it is um, in a, a stressed out state rather than using that fat mass. So what the dietitian is trying to do is make sure they are feeding less calories but really meeting those protein needs. And there's formulas out on the market that are one calorie per milliliter where you can feed less calories but there's a lot of protein per liter so we can give that high protein. And so you said the example in our medical center is this vital high protein? Absolutely. 
So it's semi-elemental. Mm -hmm. It's high protein. Mm -hmm. So the protein is more easily absorbed by the body. Exactly, because it's semi-elemental. Um, and then as you've told me, and we don't have to go into it here, but there are equations that are used in patients with an elevated BMI to help you figure out what their energy requirements are and what their protein requirements are. Yes, and I think we're going to cover that in our next video. So we've almost there. And so <laughs> if you've gone through all of the other patients and your patient doesn't meet any of these other criteria, you recommend that we use? We use here Promote with Fiber. And so this has its isocaloric, mm -hmm. meaning one kilocalorie per milliliter, mm -hmm. and a reasonable amount of protein per uh, milliliter. Absolutely. And so this is Promote. So, And we thought this would be a nice way to help take a structured, focused approach on the choice of enteral formulation. I would like to thank Serena for joining me today. Thank you.